As rough as the coming six months looked for crypto, over that horizon, there is some real reason to be extremely optimistic about crypto's future. Now, I'm going to share with you the case for crypto's coming boom that will last perhaps 15 strong years. Now, I had a few good days spending some time with Mrs. Rain and had some time just to soak up some economic and political data that has strong ripple effects into the crypto space. And sometimes stepping back in a way helps you see the beautiful forest and not just the few trees right in front of you. So if you're concerned and worried because crypto is in the crapper, and it is in the crapper, I have some bad news, and I also have some very good news. Now, be warned, this delves heavily into politics and the effects of the current political landscape on crypto in the short term and the long term. So if you find yourself easily triggered by someone's strong opinions backed by evidence, this is absolutely not the right episode for you. Welcome to the Crypto Rain channel. I'm your host, Jay Rain. And if you like money and crypto and you're looking for a real investor take on the crypto market, join the Rainmaker family. Do note, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm a crypto investor myself, and I do own or plan to own most of what I talk about on this channel because I don't talk about crypto projects I don't believe in. And if I do, I specifically state that. Now, special shout out and thanks to our Patreon members. We have a private Discord there Patreon members get access to. Make it rain on that like button, strap in for the show. Let's get right into this. Special shout out to our strategic partners, Wanchain, who has been such a great strategic partner. We have had, they have had some of the best cross-chain bridge technology in the crypto space. Its token may be down with the rest of the market, but I hold a lot of it because I believe it will get its day in the spotlight, especially as some of their tech has had, well, some of their competitors tech has had to deal with major hacks and exploits and Wanchain's technology has been exceptional. Now, this week I was digesting on the political landscape and its huge implication on the future of crypto. Do note that these are my views alone, definitely not any of strategic partnerships or relationships. These are my views. I'm going to be very clear about what I believe is coming and what it leads to and why there's a lot of reasons to first be a little bit worried, but then be really, really excited. Now, it was unclear when Joe Biden won the vote for president in the United States just how his administration was going to address crypto. There were some very powerful people in the crypto space that had huge ties to Silicon Valley and the Democrat Party that assured us that his administration in the U.S. would be very favorable to crypto because it wasn't clear that Trump's administration was favorable to crypto. Now, that hasn't turned out to be the case mostly, but at the same time, only a small part of his administration has been very crypto unfriendly. Well, good old Uncle Joe. Now I'm calling Joe Biden that because that was the nickname of actually a former U.S. president named Franklin D. Roosevelt that he gave to Joe Stalin, who FDR, Franklin D. Roosevelt, quite admired. And FDR repeatedly tried to reassure the American people that socialism was a very good setup for the country's government. And he was very friendly with Uncle Joe who is Joe Stalin. Well, moderate Joe Biden has turned out to be far left-wing Joe Biden. And actually, I did not see that coming at all. And thankfully for us in crypto, he really hasn't been all that bad for crypto as he has had bigger fresh fish to fry on his agenda per se, but he hasn't been good for it either. And White House policies are leading to, the, the current White House's policies are leading to a massive crisis Ones that are just starting now to be felt, and more will come in the next three to six months. Mm. Doubt me, there are some big things coming. Now, you might think, but Rain, what does this have to do with crypto? Well, I'm here for crypto news. And this has everything, and I mean everything, to do with why you might be bearish for the next six months but have a lot of reasons to be very bullish for the following 15 years. Now, what 15 years? Yes, 15 years, perhaps even longer than that if things go very well. We haven't seen a US president be so unpopular as Uncle Joe Biden since Jimmy Carter 
and Carter single-handedly led to a massive shift in the electorate swinging widely away from big government towards a free market approach of government getting out of the way versus in the way. So let's talk about exactly what is so wrong that Joe Biden is doing and what it is causing and why we haven't seen the worst of it yet. But a much stronger impact of his policies is going to be painfully present as people go to the polls in the U.S. later this year and how that is going to lead to an election landslide for fresh, not yet corrupted politicians who will push hard for policies that will lead to a massive growth environment for crypto. Okay, so what policies are so bad and what will they lead to? Okay, did any of you catch the problem in recent months called the baby formula crisis? What led to that? Well, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration shut down a plant that produced 40% of the U.S. baby formula and 100% of some of the very specific ones used for kids with a lot of allergies. Despite the company warning the FDA and the White House, including Biden himself, what this would lead to, the Biden administration allowed the shutdown to proceed. And three months later, voila, exactly what the company told them would happen, happened. Oh my gosh, this greedy corporation actually got it right. Well, what is coming that will be worse than that? Well, actually, larger scale food shortages. It's bad enough that people can't feed their baby, which actually that is the most powerful way to trigger a mom not to vote for you is remove the ability of her to feed her special needs child. But with bigger food shortages coming, <sighs> when you can't feed your older children either, that's going to impact a lot more families. The culmination of economic stupidity with unfettered control by unelected bureaucrats is leading to something much worse. There are coming food shortages on a much wider scale. And there are greater shortages of non-food goods and people are starting to feel it. And it's part of the reason for the escalating prices on everything. But it's going to get much worse before it gets better. Ukraine is only going to be part of the cause of this. Notice how the baby food formula crisis was only really felt a few months later after the shutdown. Why? Well, the supply chain didn't, it, it had lots of inventory until it didn't. There are some strange things with food processing plants having strange fires or explosions and a concerning number of accidents that perhaps is just chance. But combine that with real bad policies and the Department of Homeland Security not really putting two and two together to really get on this right away. And you get, over time, really bad effects months down the road that aren't being felt yet, but they will be. Now, what bad policies? Well, for the in a greater picture, the past two years, the U.S. paid really high unemployment funds at the federal level on top of the state level unemployment pay. So to pay those funds, the U.S. was printing the money. So this caused more money to be in circulation, but because far, far less people were working, far fewer goods were being produced. And still to this day, some of those people have still not returned to the workforce and employment levels are relatively low, even though there are tons of employers looking for workers right now. Many of those workers still have not returned to full employment, which means true production on top of the production of goods almost being halted for six to 18 months, depending on which country or where in the country those manufacturing plants were, there are big supply chain problems that we haven't seen the worst of yet that are coming. This adds up to much higher inflation coming. Add into that high fuel prices and inflation that is coming is gonna make Jimmy Carter years look like sunshine and rainbows. The truth is, there are some things Biden can do and things that he could do right now that would change this. He could cut federal spending. 
He could pause the spending on some of the porgulous bills recently passed by Congress in the last year, even two years ago, and get the Fed to continue to raise rates in order to combat inflation and cut taxes across the board, which would stop the printing of money so much and lure private capital back into the market. So it would slow the printing of money, but would it lure out the capital that is currently unproductive back into the productive parts of the market? Well, why is there money that is unproductive in the market? To really answer the first question, we have to look at why would there ever be money unproductive in the market? Well, when the U.S. is printing money like crazy, what do the rich know that that leads to? Massive inflation. So the rich are very savvy and they don't want to lose their wealth. So what do they do? They buy assets with that money, assets like real estate, assets like gold, assets like silver. If you notice, real estate prices have gone way, way up. That tells you massive money has been pouring into those assets over the past 10 years. And not just a little bit, but massive like hedge funds for the rich, buying trillions of dollars worth of real estate. And then they sit on those items, and this is mostly unproductive money, especially like gold that sits in safes and silver that sits in safes. But they don't want that money in a bank somewhere earning, say, 2%, while true inflation is like 15%. If they had it in real estate or gold, the value has tracked or beat what inflation is. Now, Bitcoin should also fall in that category as to what is called a risk-off asset meaning that when things get risky, Bitcoin should be seen as a hedge. But as a regulation, not just in the U.S., but across the world is still very uncertain. Bitcoin is still treated as a risky asset and a risk on asset. So Bitcoin doesn't largely fall into the category of safety like real estate and gold does for most of the rich. Though some people like Michael Saylor get it, there are still a ton of rich that don't see it that way. So though Bitcoin should fall into that, it has not yet fallen into that category, though that will probably change in the future. Now, in the short term, in the coming months, we will see the U.S. inflation continue very high. Biden is not proposing tax cuts, but hiking taxes so that the wealthy corporations and individuals can pay their fair share, right? Well, that sounds all well and good. But he leaves the part out in that statement. Did you know the wealthiest 1% in America already pay 33% of the nation's individual income taxes? I don't know about you. It sounds like the wealthy are paying their fair share. If 1% of the wealthy in America or of the population in America is carrying 33% of the nation's individual income tax burden, that sounds like their fair share to me. But he doesn't share that data with you, does he? No. Did you know that the bottom 50% of income earners in the U.S. pays just 3% of the total U.S. individual tax burden? 3%. Biden also leaves out that when you tax productive money, you get way less of it. So let's say I have a billion dollars and I'm, uh, I'm considering starting a new business called Reigns Corporation. And this new business would hire... 1,000 workers paying some 200,000 a year and paying some 50,000 a year, depending on what position and their qualifications. But the U.S. raises its income tax to 50% so the rich can pay their fair share. Well, I also factor that as well as the risk of my business failing. And let's say I evaluate, I have this idea and I'm going to make a really cool t-shirt. And I'm like, I think this t-shirt is so amazing. And that's what Rain Corporation is all about. And let's say I assess my risk of it really not being as amazing as I think it's going to be. And maybe other people don't get it. So the risk of my business failing, say I evaluate that at 50%. And the true risk is about 90% of businesses fail. But let's say I think I'm really, really good and my chance of failing is much lower than normal. I have a 50% chance of success. And that if that business is profitable, the profits might be 200 million a year return for me. So I invest a billion dollars if I'm successful. And let's say I've got a 50% chance of that. 
if I'm successful, then the business will turn 200 million a year profit for me. Okay. So the risk is 50% that what I think the consumers would like, they don't really like. So I have a 50, 50 chance of losing the whole billion dollars if I'm unsuccessful. But if I'm successful, I can recoup 20% of that a year. Well, wait, I can't recoup 20% of that a year because I have to pay my fair share. And Biden determined that paying my fair share is paying half of those gains in taxes each year. So it would take me a full 10 years to even get my money back. And that's if I'm successful. If I'm a smart guy, would I even start the business? No way, not at those income tax rates. I'm just going to park that money on the sidelines, keeping it in a risk off situation, may even a state level bond earning tax free yields that say three or four percent. I might be losing money versus inflation, or maybe I put it into real estate or park it into something else, but I am not going to start that business. So sorry to those thousand workers and families that would have supported, but the risk versus the reward is just not a smart risk to take. Now, this is why raising taxes on the rich kills the middle class every time. This is why after the horrible, terrible years of Carter, Ronald Reagan was voted into office and he did cut taxes drastically, which led to an economic and industrial boom that lasted for 15 years. Perhaps it even could have been longer, but Bush Sr., I think, squandered some opportunities to make it last further and was defeated by a moderate Democrat who reversed many Reagan policies his first two years in office. And truthfully, Clinton was a moderate Democrat years three through eight, but his first two years, he was pretty left wing. And then he moderated and actually became a really good U.S. president years three through eight. Now, I get that if you're in the U.S., many of your history teachers told you that Reagan's tax cuts didn't work. And that simply isn't true and is a total rewrite of history. If they didn't work, why was there such an economic boom for 15 years? Just just happened, right? It isn't necessarily that your teachers were liars. They were just repeating what they were told. And the media hated Reagan and loved Carter. So it doesn't matter that Reagan was right. They have done everything they could to rewrite history, including massively skewing statistics to make a massive boom look like it had nothing to do with Reagan's policies. And what they specifically do is they use statistics to lie. Now, when Reagan cut taxes on the wealthy in the U.S., did you know prior to Reagan's tax cuts, the tax rates for the wealthiest 1% in America were 70%. And it was only 70% because JFK had cut it down from 91%. Now, can you imagine the economic stagnation prior to Kennedy, where by making investment, you could lose your whole investment if it went bad. But if it went well, you only got to keep 9% of it. That is effing ridiculous. Imagine the scenario from earlier was 70% and not 50%. No way in hell would I ever start that business. Now, here is the stat socialist-leaning media and politicians will use. Federal income taxes as a percentage of GDP went from 9.1% in 1981, the first year Reagan took office. But realize as a president, that's still coasting on Carter policies because it takes a little while to change the ship in 1981. But then it fell to only 8%. So tax revenue as a percentage of GDP fell from 9.1% in 1981 down to 8% in 1989, which they say means Reagan's tax cuts did not work because less of the GDP was going to taxes, which is a very deceptive way to measure it. And they are lying to you using statistics that the statistics are true, but tax cuts it really, really obscures the bigger picture that was going on, and I'll show you how they obscured it. The tax cuts created such an economic boom that the GDP skyrocketed, so everyone hugely benefited. Tax revenues were way, way, way up, and yet they found a stat that if they leave out the context, backs the story they want to tell. Now, not the true story of what happened, 
but the story they want to tell, which is tax cuts only benefit the wealthy and lead to less government revenue. That's the story they want to tell. Let's look at the real way to measure. The top tax rate on the 1% fell from 70% to 28%. And yet, even with that massive, massive decrease in rate, the top taxed earners paid 33% total more in economic taxes as a share of GDP. And GDP went up. Additionally, the total employment as a share of the adult population rose by four percentage points which means 7.4 million more people were employed. Let's see, more people decided it was worth it to invest that billion dollars, which created all those additional jobs. This additional employment led to a higher payroll tax or higher payroll taxes, which added 14 billion additional in taxes annually. And the actual tax receipts grew tremendously and the GDP of the U.S. grew by even more. But because of the way the people counted it, it obscures the huge increases in increased revenue, actual revenue to the Treasury, as well as the higher amounts of taxes paid by the richest and the huge increase in jobs. With all the additional income and higher GDP, that, that led to massive increases in, as well at the state income tax levels. All of this is hidden by the detractors, some of them on purpose, some of them just because they're repeating what those who lied to them told them. And they never dug any deeper to learn that they were being lied to. And for whatever reason, they keep following what those same people that lied to them over and over again tell them. Now, the good news is that the people that give you misleading numbers still to this day are strangely Joe Biden supporters. They are the ones trying to sell tax hikes right now. Now, if you thought the U.S. economy is starting to go bad, try hiking taxes in this economy. That's like running over an injured person with the ambulance that's supposed to save them. The great news is no one trusts Biden right now, and his chances of getting a tax hike are extremely low at present. And in the upcoming elections, in the U.S., politicians with that thinking are likely to get trounced in favor of politicians who have not yet been corrupted by Washington's swampiness, who very much have a Reagan-type approach. Now, don't be fooled into thinking that just because somebody has an R by their name in the U.S. that they're necessarily going to solve the problem. Some of them are just as much a part of the swamp as Biden. But most of the landslide that is coming will be led by freshmen, congressmen, and women, and senators. Many of them by, with R by their names, but even possibly some with D by their names that are much more in touch with real life than those who have been in Washington for 60 years. Now, have you noticed Biden and the current U.S. politicians aren't even trying to make a case for their policies or their record at all right now? and so far have shown zero course corrections. They might be saying things slightly differently, but they are not actually taking different actions. They're continuing all the same actions. They simply have thrown all their eggs in the basket of, let's tell everyone what a threat to democracy the other guys are, and have been doing a full Hollywood produced version of, let's scare everyone into voting for us in the upcoming election because the other guys are a threat to democracy. And it isn't, it just is not working this time. Biden's approval numbers continue to fall, even as he tries to scare everyone that the other guys are so bad. Because people aren't just feeling the pinch, it's not even a pinch. It's like a huge dog biting them in the arse. And people are noticing. Another very critical thing that Reagan did and the revolution that he led did was massive regulatory decreases and massive cuts of red tape. This is exactly what the U.S. has been needing. I know people have been saying that the U.S. needs to regulate crypto to see adoption. I think more specifically what they need is regulatory clarity and to mostly get the hell out of the way. Provide some clarity, get bureaucrats mostly out of the way, and the U.S. can drive the Web3 boom that will follow like they drove much of the massive internet revolution we have seen in the past 25 years. 
Joe Biden, unfortunately for all of us who have some crypto assets, has missed that great opportunity that he has had and instead let someone like and people like Janet Yellen and her banking allies push some anti-crypto regulations as well as let the SEC literally harass Ripple while hiding some malfeasance of their own. Joe or his White House could have listened to Mike Novogratz and perhaps they did and perhaps that's why it hasn't been a mountain of terrible legislation, but they certain ha certainly have not made the U.S. a competitive place for the future of Web3 technology to be built. But that is coming, and some of it starts about six months from now. Now, let's be real. It's not all sunshine and rainbows. No, the coming six to nine months might really be rough, not just for the U.S., across the world. Why? Because if I'm correct, and there are food shortages, that is a situation where people go to cash or what people call risk off situation where they want less risk and as much capital that they can made liquid as possible. But if the shortcomings where the current administration is not seeing the problems that are coming down the pipeline and then creating an adequate solution to solve them before they appear, Exactly like what happened with the baby formula crisis, if those aren't addressed, it's going to be a landslide victory of fresh blood in the Congress of the United States and full of people who are very aware of the current problems and with a mandate to fix them. Those tend to be the type of individuals who lean towards light regulatory clarity on new tech like crypto rather than heavy regulatory burdens that make the U.S. take a backseat in this technology that will change the world in the next 20 years, whether or not the U.S. is part of it. Now, we spoke with the company last week about how crypto will enable them to make research and development for cures to cancer much cheaper to develop, while those with cancer can provide their data and scans to research companies and receive some value from providing that data. The Web3 future is coming, and it looks like the U.S. is likely to pay, play a very heavy role in it. And I think we all have Joe Biden actually to thank for it. President Joe ran on a platform that he would unite the country much more than the previous guy. And to be honest, he has absolutely delivered on that. So let's give credit where credit is due. Joe Biden is bringing together the U.S. of A. like hasn't been seen since perhaps Bill Clinton and before that Ronald Reagan. It's just in a very different way than Uncle Joe thought. The country is uniting in the rejection of Joe Biden and his policies of the far left of his party because they're feeling the effects of those policies firsthand and they don't like it. And they're about to be hit with much, much more inflation, many more shortages, and probably the economy will continue to weaken and really start to falter. And if it gets bad enough, many people who voted for Uncle Joe might even be fully ready to vote for people the opposite of Joe, even if it could lead to a mean tweet storm once again. I think people think back to a few years ago and think we sure had a lot of drama and a lot of mean tweets, but we miss the old days of a booming economy, problems getting solved, and dictators being too scared of crazy orange man to do anything on the national stage. Don't take my word on this. Just watch it unfold in the coming months and year. Now, this doesn't mean that the current White House can't flip things around, make some changes, change the whole trajectory of how this is going to play out for the economy. Bill Clinton did that after two years and getting trounced in the elections after two years. He recalculated his whole administration and had a much more successful last six years than his first two years and made some drastic changes and it made a big difference and kept him in office. That would make a big difference for the economy, for the stock market, and even crypto. It just means that the current White House is not going that direction because they haven't shown any acknowledgement of what the problems really are. And not only not stopping the things that are causing the problems so that the course can be reversed, but they seem to be putting more pressure on the gas pedal going into a direction that is absolutely sure to lead to this. 
Nine months from now, the makeup of the U.S. Senate and Congress is likely to be much more libertarian, which is much more pro-crypto and perhaps to a great degree. And finally, we'll have an environment where the U.S. fully embraces crypto, which is when crypto goes crazy. If Biden doesn't change course, then we might see Orange Man again or even Florida's Governor Ron DeSantis, who is likely to be a very pro-crypto president should he win. And very much towards the light crypto regulation, providing clarity like traffic signals rather than thousands and thousands of pages of legislation crippling this technology in the U.S. for the next 20 years. Likely to see light regulation, which would lead to a boom for 15 years, maybe even much longer. This will be followed by a worldwide boom of the industry that we've been wishing for, but not feeling like it was possible. Now, who do we have to thank for this? Well, Joe Biden. So thank you, Mr. Biden. We thank you for being so bad. You made a better alternative so clear to everyone. The coming 15 years is going to be amazing and probably wouldn't have been possible without Joe Biden. Don't forget, if you're in the U.S., to do your research on the right politicians who are truly going to be pro-crypto and light regulation and very pro-growth and vote like your future depends on it. Well, because it does. Thank you for joining me. I know I delved a lot into politics. I don't often do that. I do have very strong opinions. I back them. I'm always open to being wrong on things. And even every once in a while, I am wrong. I am just so often right. Sometimes I get the timing a little bit off, but I look at the incentives and what that leads to because incentives dictates behavior. And even though it doesn't always change things within the time frame that I'm thinking it will, in the long term, it almost always pans out that way. If you haven't already, join the Rainmaker family. We appreciate your time today and we will see you next time. Remember, no rain, no gain. To the space, chasing all of the games, chasing yeah. the pumps and all of the hype trains. But like in life, uh, shit yeah. right before you could. Was told to buy when it was pouring like a rainmaker should. Sure. I buy when it's down, don't chase the boats that I miss, uh, cause I always made the time in mind. I sit the one out, cause I'm patient like that. And I'll wait for the right time. I sell when it's high, I buy when it's low. They call me rich, they call me smart. I'm just a rainmaker running the show. Calculated investments, I don't leave with my heart. Uh, principles are simple, the why when it's boring, just gotta be smart I sell when it's hype, like all the channels they pump it That's when I was selling, the parabolic and dump it They call me rich, they call me smart I'm a rainmaker, making my own star I'm with the future, learning the past Makes it time fly by, years going so fast The game plan is mine, I'll own it now When I reach the top, haters asking me how Cause I'm a rainmaker, investments I love And I follow what I learn, not relying on luck uh, Time is never better, the time like the present is next Five years is a gift and it's feeling like heaven I'm committed to learn, to study and to know that Nothing comes easy but when knowledge is gained Yo, seeking out this wrong consumer will come a bear market Learning and growing and when it's slow will be the target They say it's come out, Bitcoin is dead The massive decreases can get to your head Sticking around, the time is better I'm strong like that, I'll let the others be fretters Two years time the ball will bring back the gains That makes it worth the effort cause here comes the rain So let's go rain makers, let's make it all happen The goal with the hate Play the haters be crappy I'm here for five years, let's do this together The time is right, the time could be better They call me rich, they call me smart I'm a rainmaker, making my own star I'm with the future, learning the past Makes the time fly by, years going so fast This game plan is mine, I'll own it now When I reach the top, haters asking me how Cause I'm a rainmaker, investments I love And I follow what I learn, not relying on luck uh, Haters be hating Time to slow down Addressing what to say when I'm wearing my crown They're chasing green candles like someone who was new I got a vision that was bigger helping me to push through I'm still human and sometimes it is rough And that's what makes me special, simply I stay tough Cause I'm a rainmaker, investments I love And I follow what I learn, not relying on luck uh.